immediately we knew that we had to do something and immediately there was a huge community outreach. So the biggest challenge is with the ongoing pandemic that in-person communication is simply not possible. We will keep learning, we will keep growing, we will keep supporting each other. This is In the Moment with COVID-19 here in Southern Minnesota. As we all know, the historic COVID-19 crisis is upon us during an election year and has already significantly disrupted the voting process of the people and the campaign process for our politicians. The campaign trail normally consists of bouncing from one large group of people to another, shaking hands and listening to citizens' concerns and ideas face to face. Naturally, tactics for reaching voters have had to change. So today I spoke with Rory Roloff from the Dan Feehan for Congress campaign to find out how they're navigating the trail here in Southern Minnesota. It's uh, kind of a cardinal rule of uh, doing organizing or politics that in-person communication is the best way to go about it. Doing door knocking, getting in front of people, going and meeting with groups. And obviously with the ongoing pandemic, that is simply not possible. So the campaign has really had to make a transition to remote organizing and using digital tools, doing uh, online phone banking. Beyond though, just doing stuff like that, it's been uh, a challenge, but also a blessing to be able to shift into um, really living Dan's idea of putting people first. And that's taking phone banks, which would normally be, hey, have you heard about Dan? Here's you know, his experience at the Pentagon, here's his experience as an educator, to more shifting to doing things like just simple check-ins. Reaching out to elderly folks and being able to do check-ins with people who really need it has been one of the, I think one of the ways I'm proudest of the campaign has been able to uh, kind of tackle this crisis. One of the largest issues that Dan Feehan is running on is equal access to health care for all people in southern Minnesota. Being in the midst of the largest health crisis in a century has magnified this issue throughout the country and the world. So I asked Rory what equal access really looks like here in our region and how the pandemic has shaped our perspective on its importance. When you hear people talk about uh, universal health care, making sure that everybody has affordable access to health care, you tend to presuppose that people have physical access to health care. Sure. And that is something that is not as widely discussed, and I think it's something that Dan knows acutely. He knows that affording health care is just one part of it. It's making sure that you know you don't have to drive two hours for treatment or be able to have treatment in your home. And I think that absolutely, I think that what Dan is is talking about with concrete, understandable ideas for where our healthcare system needs to go. I think the the coronavirus pandemic just illustrates his point when you need not just a coronavirus test, but when you have, if you have a cancer test, if you have the flu, you can have a hospital there, an emergency room, urgent care, somewhere you can go. And I think that the free market uh, approach that we hear some from the other side would say that it's just not feasible to keep a hospital open in a lot of these areas. And I think that that just leads to communities like, like where I live, just withering on the vine, because if you don't have good schools, you don't have a hospital, it's going to be real hard to attract businesses to move there, going to be hard to attract people to live there. And I think that Dan's message of affordable access to health care, you, you miss the access part. If you have to drive two hours to get a test, do you really have access to that test? It really brings into stark contrast just the difference between what he's proposing and what we're currently hearing out of Washington. And I think that's just a cardinal reason why we need somebody like Dan in Congress who understands what's going on out here. Another issue that we're facing during this crisis is one of leadership. As a people, we look to politicians as leaders. Why? Because we've elected them to understand and handle complex and detailed information about what is best for the greater good. We've chosen them to deal with it, and we need them to prove that they can every day. So I asked Rory to explain what good leadership looks like to Dan Feehan and how he intends to exercise it. We're hearing that people want strong leadership, and I've personally been very grateful for what Governor Walls has been doing. Absolutely. That he has, he has really been a, uh, a strong hand on the tiller, to, to use an analogy. And I think that what people are looking for in times of tremendous uncertainty is answers and leadership and they don't want spin they don't want 
they, they, they don't want somebody to tell you what they want to hear. They want to know what's going on, what they can do and what they need to do. And so I think that's where somebody like Dan, I think is really a, just an incredibly strong candidate just because he has that proven track record of leadership at the Pentagon, um, leading troops in Iraq. On the other side of that coin, people are looking for just commitments to community. It's Southern Minnesota tradition. When was the last time you talked to your neighbor? You know, we can't knock on the door. We can't go over there for uh, <laughs> for for opening day for the twins or anything I like know, that. I know, I know. But, but being able to know that, you know, no matter what, what, what political ideology you have or where you fall on the red blue, red blue line that we're all one big community here in southern minnesota and the only way we're going to get through this is if we all rely on each other you know i think the the worst thing that we can do in a crisis like this is to lose hope and i i hesitate to speak for dan but knowing him as well as i do i know he's optimistic um because we'll get through this together when the uh shelter in place or the safer at home uh, orders are all lifted. We'll all emerge from our houses and, and, and come together as a community and get back out there and get to the business that really what Dan's campaign is all about, putting people first, getting out there, seeing each other face to face again, talking about what unites us, not what divides us, and uh, what we can do to help make Southern Minnesota that much stronger. What unites us? It's how humans have always beaten the odds. It was our unity that got us to the top of the food chain, and it will be our unity that allows us to prevail through the hardest of times. Our political system needs to be a place where we demand unity. If we can get along in our neighborhoods, at our schools, at our jobs, then we need to elect people who know how to get along in politics. Different ideas and solutions are important. Eventually agreeing on what's best for everybody is more important. If there's anything that this crisis has taught me, it's that we need each other, all of us. So here in the United States, wherever you fall on the red or blue line, I believe we should vote for leaders who want to bring us together, united, just like in the name.